Hey guys, what's up? My name is Hunter Nelson, president of Tortoise and Hare Software. We are a Jacksonville-based provider of software and digital marketing services. We build custom software applications and marketing websites. Um, but today what I want to share with you is a application called Steady Hops. Uh, and this is an application that I've worked on part-time for a period of several uh, years um, and it's a pre-release product and I really just want to show it to you today for more of a uh, kind of portfolio purposes than anything so let me switch screens here and I'll come over here to studyhops.com um, this application is deployed on Azure platform as a service um, and it's just kind of sitting out there um, accruing some SEO uh, strength and um, allows me to demo it to people. Uh, again, this is a pre-release product, so um, this is just an alpha testing site, uh, and it's not for sale, it's, it hasn't been finalized, it's not um, ready yet, um, but what it is called is uh, Steady Hops, and that stands for Steady Hosted Operational Privacy System. Um, when the GDPR was coming out, I uh, had an application that I knew worked for a uh, different sort of process and I knew that uh, GDPR was going to be something that I could apply this type of application to so I started chipping away at building it and it's not really for GDPR compliance um, but I am speculating that a similar federal law will come over to the United States and this application is intended to be ready um, and to help uh, US businesses comply with the privacy law um, and what I mean by that is uh, these privacy laws that have been getting passed in uh, the UK and China and India uh, they allow uh, citizens to request um, from big companies like uh, Facebook to have their data deleted uh, changed transferred between entities in cases like insurance um, and just otherwise manipulated it gives citizens the right to um, control that their their personal data that these uh, larger tech companies um, hold and uh, that puts a compliance burden on these tech companies so this uh, application will allow them uh, to receive and intake those requests um, uh, comply with fulfilling them and then keep an audit trail for their um, own legal protection and risk mitigation purposes so this is just a basic landing page. Um, I haven't done a whole bunch in the marketing yet. Again, this is pre-release, but it would allow a privacy department to possibly be driven to this page by some pay-per-click advertising or organic, organically found, and they could come and begin a free trial of the system. So I'll go ahead and click this begin trial button here. And uh, I'll go ahead and register a quick demo account and hit register all right so now that they've registered they'll hit this uh, basic confirmation page here um, get the details of their registration and uh, kind of be driven to what's next and uh, what's next is they could either register more users or uh, really the first starting point is to create their first form and I'll hit create here and that'll take us to this uh, form builder and uh, this will allow them to create their own customized uh, intake form for their particular process you know for instance if they were a particular city they might want to create some header text here field and then they 
can add various uh, field types to the list to collect the information they feel is relevant um, for their uh, particular process. Um, I'm not going to run through each particular field uh, creation, but you can edit these types of field by clicking the uh, pencil here. You can also reorder the fields by clicking and dragging. And uh, all these fields are in a vertical layout, which is pretty cool because it's going to make the form compatible on any device. It'll be responsive. Um, so that's great. Um, what I'll go do here is go back to my forms. Um, and just real quickly, on the once you, when you're signed in here, there's a couple buttons. There's your work list or queue of privacy requests that you've seen. You can uh, create and or you can submit new instances of a privacy request if you received one offline, and then you can configure uh, the forms and the users. Um, so right now I'm on the configure forms page, and this shows you all the uh, list of forms that you have. Um, when you register for a new account, I script in a, a sample form um, that will gives you a head start on creating one. Um, so I've already this has already all been configured as part of the new account, um, and this is what it looks like on the form editor side. When I come back to uh, my forms here, you can also preview that form, and this is a preview of what it would look like on a public facing basis. Um, and this is uh, a preview URL, but if I come here to uh, submit new and hit uh, sample form, it's going to get a submittable form uh, version of that particular form that you created. And this is a public facing URL. Um, all the other screens we've seen are internal to the privacy department, but this particular page would be the public facing form. And uh, webmasters can put that on any uh, location that they want to accept those requests and allows the citizens to come and submit these privacy requests. So I'll just sit, submit some uh, data here real quick. And boom, I'm a citizen. I've just submitted my privacy request. I get my uh, confirmation page here and a reference number that I can use to collaborate with the particular entity that I've submitted my privacy request to. On the back end here, um, the privacy department would get a notification that a new re submission has been received and they can click on the link to go directly to that submission and start editing it. Um, that submission will also appear within um, their queue or work list and this would just be a number of um, forms that uh, are privacy requests that have come into the system and they can open one up and begin to fulfill it. So here on the uh, request management page uh, you can see your submission details that there are citizens submitted into the uh, privacy request system and uh, there's a couple tabs here at the top. There's an actions tab which they can do things like change the status um, they can create tasks, they can uh, collaborate on the request by adding discussions, and this allows to see kind of like a discussion thread of um, you know, progress, which is great for uh, teams of people collaborating to fulfill these sort of things. Um, there's a chronology that lets um, gives an audit trail of how the request was processed, when it was received, uh, things like that. And then um, throughout that process, um, you want to assign tasks. So I might, for instance, uh, have an analyst or something that's actually involved um, with fulfilling the request and I'm a department manager um, so I'll create a new task and I can assign it a due date let's just go with Friday and uh, create a uh, and choose a task type there's a complete by anyone and that's if any one of the assignees were to receive the task and complete it the task would be considered completed and then there's a complete by all type, which means all the assignees have to 
kind of multi-turn the key to complete the task. Um, since I've only got one user in this particular account, I will do a complete by any task, assign it to myself, and hit create. And that task has uh, now been created. If I come back to the actions tab, you can see that uh, there's a new task that's open. Um, and then the person who received the task will get an email notifying that them a, that a new task has been assigned to them um, with a uh, due date and they can click on that uh, link to come directly to uh, this request management area and complete their task and so they could come up here to open see the task details um, notes about completing it and hit the complete task button here. Okay, so that's kind of the basic workflow of uh, how this type of system would work. Um, again, there's a ton of stuff that I'd like to do to um, expand, make it look cooler, uh, you know, increase the marketing, uh, get some feedback from people, but uh, this is just something that I chipped away in my spare time. It was really um, as much of a learning uh, some additional coding and keeping my coding skills fresh part-time while I worked on um, some legacy applications at one of my previous jobs. Um, so with that said, I will kind of stop here with the demo portion and I will go into a little bit more of a just super brief technical interview. but. Um, if you want to get in contact with me and talk more about it or just learn more about Tortoise and Hare software, um, again, just visit us on the web at Tortoise and Hare software, submit a contact form, or uh, give me a call. Um, okay, with that said, let me switch over here to uh, Visual Studio and do a quick technical interview or overview. So this is an ASP.NET Core 2.1 app. So it is on the, some of the latest and greatest uh, cloud technology. Um, ASP.NET Core was kind of the, the merging of their uh, web, or web framework and their desktop framework into one cohesive um, unit. Um, and I've built this application on a repository pattern um, with uh, MVC as the front end um, with the various views, front end services, um, and identity and identity and author authorization uh, using the um, out of the box .NET um, stuff. Um, I've got a persistence layer here um, with various uh, entity uh, migrations. Um, I've used entity framework code first migrations to describe table changes and everything and that allows me to push all the database changes in the app via code described migrations instead of uh, SQL scripts and so that's kind of stored here in the persistence layer um, also got an entity layer and I have all the models here so for instance let's look at a submission model um, so we've got the field values um, the tasks that are associated with the submission, chronology actions, discussion thread items, um, and these are just kind of the code rep representations of some of the data that we saw in the demo. So for instance, here's a chronology action, got action titles, notes, submission IDs, um, and some of the other ways that you can kind of describe a database table via code. And then I got a uh, business logic layer here and this is really kind of the the middle tier um, where I have various repositories that allow um, kind of the data access layer code this is how MVC communicates back um, to any to the database and does any sort of um, pre-processing or post-processing of data before it goes in and out of the database so it's what's known as an in-tier application with a repository pattern. And that really just means you've got a, a view layer here. You've got this repository layer, layer that kind of handles all the business logic. And then you've got a data layer which really describes the database. Um, 
So this is a cloud application that is deployed in Microsoft Azure's platform as a service offering. Um, since I'm more of a developer and not an infrastructure guy, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Um, from an infrastructure management perspective, um, so I deployed in the uh, uh, platform as a service offering. Um, and I'll show you some of the resources involved in that real quick. So we've got a DB server here, which is just a, a SQL server, and a database, which is the Azure SQL database offering. Very similar to SQL Server, um, with some minor tweaks that really haven't affected any way um, that I've built the application. Um, I've got a blob storage account here, which is where the files that are uploaded as part of processing the request are stored. An SSL cert to uh, keep the application secure. Um, and an app service, and this is where the code is really deployed, is into this app service plan. Um, and the platform as a service is awesome. Um, it gives you the freedom to choose where you want your uh, app service to be hosted geographically and then has all the other great cloud features such as auto scaling when you get large volumes of traffic, etc. And uh, a key vault for storing um, secure items like passwords or hash keys or uh, sensitive data that needs to be up in the cloud but stored securely. So all in all, uh, not too much of a management nightmare from an Azure resources perspective. Um, and I have a build pipeline here that's uh, using Azure DevOps for the source code repository, um, which kind of gives a web-based version of uh, Team Foundation Server, uh, which is similar to GitHub. And when I do a check-in from my local machine, um, it's run through this uh, build pipeline and a release is created and the release is pushed from Azure DevOps to the Azure platform as a service offering. So the build here um, pretty much uh, prepares kind of a virtual machine for running a build agent, checks out the code from the source repository, restores all the NuGet packages associated with uh, creating the uh, build or the application. Um, this actually kind of interesting, I won't run through it too much, but I use Telerik controls as part of the visuals on the front end, so I had to learn a little bit about authenticating with third-party um, NuGet packages as part of this build step. And then it actually does the code build and runs a command line script, which is um, where the database gets updated with the Entity Framework code first migration. If this fails, that's awesome. Uh, the build's aborted and everything's rolled back. So if there is an issue uh, on a check-in, I get notified via email that the build failed and I can go react to it accordingly. Um, I haven't configured unit tests for this yet, but if there were unit tests, I'd run through all the unit tests um, before completing the build. And then at this point, it's pretty much uh, done and it will create any debugging symbols that need to go up with the um, application creates a build artifact and does a post job kind of checkout uh, to wrap things up and finalizes it. Once the build's completed, the release is then created and that release is connected to this Azure platform as a service offering and uh, it's pushed up to there. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, the overview here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been an awesome passion project for me. Um, and right now, uh, where the business is at is I'm really uh, doing professional services sort of uh, revenue and I'm focusing on building up that revenue stream. But uh, as US federal privacy law continues to emerge, um, I will definitely be investing in this application and um, continuing to uh, develop it and uh, targeting a you know release or a more formal uh, kind of readiness point um, as that legislation uh, emerges. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just visit us on the web at tortoiseandhairsoftware.com submit something through the contact form or give me a call and I'd be happy to talk with you. All right, thank you.